Hey everyone, it's Zach here, and in this video, I'm going to discuss open pollination seeds and hybrid seeds, what they are, and the differences between the two. All right, the first thing to understand when talking about open pollination is cross pollination, and that is the process when pollination essentially occurs between two plants, either by insects, wind, or water. And really, what it comes down to is Let's say you have a bee he goes to the flower of one plant, and that flower is a male flower. He gets the pollen, he then flies to another plant which has a female flower, he lands in those pollens mix. That is cross-pollination. Okay, the next process we need to understand is self-pollination. That is essentially the same thing as cross-pollination except that it occurs on the same plant. So the plant will have both male and female reproductive organs. And some examples of this are tomatoes, eggplants, and beans. Okay, now that we understand those concepts, we can understand open pollination. And that is when these processes occur between two plants of the same variety. And that's really the distinguishing factor there. And when that happens, you get seeds that produce true to type, meaning they have the same traits as the parent plants with a little natural variation and this is why open pollination pollinated seeds are the only seeds you can save and grow true to type okay so hybrids actually occur naturally in nature and it's simply when two plants of different varieties are cross pollinated however when we talk about hybrids in today's terms we're talking much more specifically about the controlled cross-pollination between two plants of different varieties in which you can select for specific traits you want. And this is done by breeders and companies and they can patent these hybrids. And what happens though is once you create a first generation hybrid with the traits you want, after that the seeds will not produce true to type. So the traits will be varied and they won't be what you want you can't really save the seed over time and get the same traits. And that is a real problem with hybrids is you end up relying on companies and very complicated processes. Okay, so one of the actual benefits to hybrids is that they do tend to produce more vigorously. Now that's not always the case, but a lot of times they do. And this can be beneficial to farmers if you're not worried about saving seeds, but they lose out in flavor because breeders focus on traits such as production and shelf life. So another important subject is heirloom seeds and all heirlooms are actually open pollinated which is of course necessary if you want to save the seed and have it grow true to type. But heirlooms are very important because you can find them adapted to your environment and with very special traits or you can create your own which is really awesome too. Okay, so I wanted to touch on GMOs here a little bit, and that is genetically modified organisms, and it's when scientists go into a laboratory, they take the genes of one species and combine it with the genes of an entirely different species. So it's unnatural in and of itself, but there isn't enough research to be using it on the wide-scale basis that they are. And one of the things they've done is combine corn with the gut-eating bacteria. So the DNA of that gut-eating bacteria is now in the corn that we're eating. They also engineer them to withstand heavier uses of Roundup and toxic chemicals. Okay, so the final point I want to touch on is the fact that open pollinated seeds are much more diverse on two different levels. Number one is the plant variety level. And what I mean by that is literally there are way more varieties of open pollinated seeds than there are hybrids. And that's because anyone can save open pollinated seeds and select for traits and create new varieties. Whereas with hybrids, it's a very complex process and these companies have a vested interest in patenting and limiting varieties and maximizing their profit. So number two, they're more diverse on a genetic level and that's because breeders, when they're breeding hybrids, they only breed in single gene traits, meaning if they breed in a disease resistance, that's only a single gene defense. And as soon as that disease finds a workaround, it's going to be home free. Whereas with open pollinated seeds, it always works with multiple genes for a trait. 
So it has multiple levels of defenses or strengths to for each trait, which makes it much more resilient and strong. And that's really kind of the big thing here is in the end, on a long-term scale, open pollinated seeds are way more strong and resilient and you can actually adapt them to your environment, which is very important too, because hybrids won't be adapted to your environment. And, you know, of course you can save seed. That's incredibly important, especially when we see that varieties, open pollinated varieties and varieties all around the world are decreasing. So it's very important to save seed and create new varieties and to increase biodiversity and, you know, create, select for traits that you like and for seeds that are good for your area and then you can trade them or sell them to people in your area and you won't have to be relying on these big companies i mean if you only have hybrid seeds and shit hits the fan you're screwed i mean if for some reason you can't buy hybrid seeds anymore you won't have any other backup to grow food and that's why these are also very important all right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You found it a little bit informative and maybe learned something from it. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And let's go out there, make the world a better place through permaculture.